let us now consider an integral of a function that has a simple pole in the region where we consider the integral. Okay. Let us consider a function f of z which is analytic in a region D as considered here. Let z 0 z equal to z 0 be a point in D. If uh, z 0 is a point, let us choose that z 0 depict that point as shown here. If z equal to z 0 is a point as de depicted there, then it is clear that the function f of z which is completely analytic in all points in D including z 0, if I divide that function with a term z minus z 0, the resulting function f of z divided by z minus z 0 clearly has a pole of order 1 in D. And that pole which is of order 1 is at the point z equal to z 0. The pole at z equal to z 0 since that is of order 1 it is simpler to call it a simple pole. A simple pole. Let us consider integral of such a function over a closed contour, a closed line integral of such a function. A closed line integral henceforth will be referred to as a closed contour. So, let us choose that contour and name it C conveniently over which we integrate this function f of z over z minus z 0 which clearly has a pole at z equal to z 0. Let us find out what is the value of such an integral. Before we do this integral, let us keep in mind that doing this where we consider the integral over contour C of f of z alone would have given us 0 since f of z is completely analytic in D. It is this the function f of z over z minus z 0 which has a simple pole that we need to evaluate. How do we do this? Let us choose a convenient variable w such that w is z minus z 0. So, this 
picture has been depicted in the complex z plane where the complex variable chosen was z. Now, if I introduce a new complex variable z w which is z minus z 0, I could introduce a w plane and draw the same figure as follows. This was my old complex plane. That was the region D in which the point Z0 existed. Now, since W is Z minus Z0, if I introduce a W plane, which I could very well do, it will be such that it could be chosen such that the W plane with its real axis chosen parallel to that of Z and imaginary axis also chosen parallel to that of Z, that will have its origin at point Z equal to Z0. So, clearly at Z equal to Z0, W is equal to 0, which is the origin of the W plane. This is the W plane. Now, I could try to write the same integral in terms of w. To do that, all I have to do is to write dz first, choosing w at equal to z minus z0, it is clear that dw will be dz itself since z0 is the same, is the same point, it, it is a constant, it does not change, hence dw is, must be the same as dz and z itself can be written as w plus z0. We could write this integral over the closed co contour c as f of z which can be written as f of w plus z0 over z minus z0 is w to dz is d w. What is convenient about writing it in this fashion is that I could now choose a polar form for w which I will write as rho e to the i phi where rho is the modulus of the complex variable w and phi is the angle of w. Okay. Let us now look at the contour that we have at hand. Okay. Let we have said that the contour that we consider C is well within the domain D, where f of z is completely analytic. So, let that be that contour. Now, I could draw the same contour in comp complex W plane as well. It would look like this. Clearly, coming to the W plane, that contour C traverses some closed path around the origin. Let us now pause and ask the nature of f of z over z minus z0 at points inside the contour C. As we have seen, inside the contour C which is inside which itself is inside the domain D f of z over z minus z0 is analytic at all points except at the point z equal to z0 which is the point 
w equal to 0. So in the w plane we can say that the contour c is the, all the points inside the at all the points except w equal to 0 the function that we are integrating which is f of w plus z0 over w is analytic. So I could very well choose another line or another contour to go from go around this uh, these two points sorry to go around this point which takes the shape of a circle for instance and I would see that let us call that circle um, let us turn that circle S1 and the fact that uh, f of z over z minus z0 is analytic at all points in between these two between the closed contour c as well as the new circle s since the function f of w plus z0 over w is completely analytic at all points in between i could very well consider such a circle and the answer would not be different from the answer that I would get for f of w plus z0. This makes it or this allows me to write this integral as an closed integral over s1 of f of w plus z0 over w into dw. Let, let us choose that circle S1. Now you see I could continue doing this by ensuring that I never touch the point w equal to 0 or z equal to z0. This is so because at all points except at w equal to 0 within this circle S1 the function f of w plus z0 over w is still analytic. So I could make the circle still smaller. Let us choose a very small circle which I will call S epsilon such that it goes around the, the point w equal to 0. and consider the same integ an integral over that uh, that circle s epsilon since the function is analytic between all points or analytic at all points between s1 the original circle and s epsilon it makes no difference its value is going to be equal to that of the function that of the integral over s1 let us now try to evaluate the uh, this integral which is an integral over s epsilon where epsilon is the radius chosen to be the radius of that circle. Now if I choose epsilon as the radius over the circle of the circle uh, around the point w equal to 0 then I could write dw as well over the circle it is clear that modulus of w which basically gives us the radius of that circle that must be equal to epsilon on s epsilon on the circle epsilon. So dw must be epsilon times d of e to the i phi can be expressed easily as epsilon into e to the i phi into i into d phi.
by making use of the fact that derivative of e to the i phi is i into e to the i phi. So that d of e to the i phi is i into e to the i phi d phi. Now evaluating this you could see that substituting a rho equal to mod of w equal to epsilon on the circle this integral becomes f of epsilon e to the i phi plus z0 over w is epsilon e to the i phi into dw is i epsilon e to the i phi d phi. Uh, this integral becomes a much simpler integral by observing that these factors of epsilon e to the i phi cancels and overall factor of i comes out to give us f of epsilon e to the i phi into z0 over well that is all denominator has been cancelled away completely into d phi into a factor of i and that is what the value of this integral looks like over the circle s epsilon. Now observe that since f of z is analytic at all points including z equal to 0, z equal to z 0 in D it must be continuous at the point at all points including the point z equal to z0 which allows me to choose epsilon to be as small as I can as small as I want We can choose epsilon to be as small as we like. It will give us the value of f at z0, that is it. Okay. And what is that value? If I choose, if I take limit epsilon tends to 0, that goes to i into integral of f of z0 at over d phi. Since f of z0 does not depend on d phi, it comes out of the integral and the answer turns out to be, the answer to this turns out to be i into f of z0 into integral of d phi. Remember, this is an integral over the circle s epsilon of arbitrarily small radius. No matter how small you choose the radius, the answer to the integral over d phi will always be equal to 2 pi because you go around the circle the angle changes from 0 to 2 pi and the answer turns out to be 2 pi i into f of z0. So the answer to this integral comes out as 2 pi i over 2 pi i times f the value of f at z equal to z0. So the upshot of all the, this whole exercise is that if you have an integral of this type which is of the form an analytic function f of z divided by z minus z0 then the answer to that will be 2 pi i times the value of that analytic part at z equal to z0. This value is often called 
the residue of the integral residue at z equal to z 0 of the integral. This value is called the residue of the integral at z equal to z 0. So, we can say that the answer to this is 2 pi i times the residue of the integral at z equal to z 0. This result is often called Cauchy's contour theorem or formula. Observe that it automatically includes the fact that if this term were not 0, sorry, if the, this term were not present, if the that is if the integrant, the function being integrated did not have any pole in it, then the answer would be 0. So, we can make use of this, this is one important result of uh, complex integration which is extensively made use in physics in most context to, uh, to draw very important results, physical results. So, we will see a few examples of this and uh, many applications of many mathematical applications of for evaluating series and so on and certain uh, certain difficult certain integrals which are difficult to do in uh, on real line and so on by making use of this result.